and welcome back to another episode on the poor man's GTR. That was weird. Um, my name is Damien, and today we're going to continue working on this car. For those that are new to the channel, I'll give you a quick look. So this is an RB25 Neo DE engine, which means it is naturally aspirated. That obviously we have put a turbo on the side of it. It's got great compression from cylinder one all the way to cylinder six, which is a great start. So we've got to give it a bit of a clean up because it hasn't been used for years. And that's what we're going to be doing today. This vlogging thing is kind of weird, but let's give it a shot. Anyways, for those that have been following from the beginning, will know that I've been making all the decisions this thus far. And I think it's finally time for, to let you guys participate, put your own little spin on it. So watch till the end of the video and let's get started. I started off by removing the cam angle sensor and after that I was able to take off the timing cover. Most of these bolts are undone with a 10mm socket and parts were placed with corresponding bolts on a table so it makes life a little bit easier when you go to put everything back together. Next up was the metal plate or the dust shield that sits behind the harmonic balancer and as I've already mentioned our engine did not come with a harmonic balancer so we took that plate straight off. Then the three bolts were removed that hold in the cam angle sensor bracket. After that, I put the bolt that holds the harmonic balancer back into the engine. I'm pretty sure it's a 27 mil and I just grabbed a ratchet and turned it over by hand until the engine was at top dead center. Silly me forgot to press the record button on the camera. So we've got no footage of removing the cam gears, but what I'll do is I will include footage from one of my spare RB25 engines we tried a compression test. And to do that, we had to install some cam gears. I'll grab that footage, I'll reverse it, and it'll just look like we're removing it. Very, very simple process. So with all these parts removed, it's time to remove the camshafts. I did this by loosening all the cam caps about a quarter turn, starting from the outside and slowly working my way in. According to a few videos I've watched online, you want to do this slowly because you can potentially break a camshaft if you don't loosen the pressure slowly and equally. As you can see that really really wasn't too hard this is the second time i've ever done something like that and if i can do it trust me you can too uh, pretty much whatever engine you're working with there's definitely like a youtube video or a forum blog post somebody's tinkered with it um definitely give it a shot yourself it's quite enjoyable like you start taking things off slowly putting it on the table marking everything it almost makes me feel like i know what i'm doing and i would love to recondition or rebuild an engine and i think that's really one of the biggest things that's next on the list we've played around with paint, um, under sealing, uh, minor engine bay shaves, slowly putting back the interior. So I think an engine rebuild is really the next one up. We've got like a running SR20, a few uh, broken RBs over there we can rebuild on a budget, but unfortunately everything is very time consuming um, and costly as well. So can, to continue doing cool shit, we're unfortunately gonna have to say goodbye to one of my favorite cars, but that's another story. So with both of the camshafts removed, it was time to soak it all in petrol overnight just so that the sludge can sort of loosen up and it makes life a little bit easier when I come in the next day and start cleaning.
and magically it's the next day and I'm back in the shop. So I started off by using a soft bristle brush to try clean off most of the sludge. The petrol did most of the work and it was coming off very very nicely. The head got the exact same treatment, I just kind of put a bit of petrol in there and tried to scrub it as best as I could leaving the sump last. So pretty much, I guess, all the oil and the dirt would just flow to the bottom of the sump. And when I pulled it off, I was expecting it to be very dirty, but for some reason, the bottom of the engine was relatively clean, which was a, which was a good surprise. So with the sump all cleaned up and resealed, it was time to move on to spray painting the actual engine block. On the SR20s, the engine blocks are made out of aluminium, so you can just use a bit of alley cleaner and they come up looking really, really nice. But the RB engines are cast iron and often you have to spray paint them to make them look nice and presentable again. So we're just using a bit of VHT satin black engine enamel and two coats on each side of the engine block should get it looking very nice. So we just got back from the shops and we have enough supplies to make the turbo oil feed, drain, coolant feed and drain. Thank you Dan, uh, behind the camera. And of course we're using Speedflow, Australian made. Um, don't cheap out on your fittings because I've had friends in the past, their cars have caught on fire because of oil um, fittings have broken. Obviously the oil hits the hot exhaust pipe and it goes up in flames. So it's definitely worth spending an extra few dollars on buying the quality stuff. And talking about quality, Speedflow can also be purchased if you're in Perth. Um, Lost Performance Racing is a local distributor. They've got pretty much all their fittings. I'm pretty sure the prices are the exact same as online, but the beauty of it is you go in store and you can pick out exactly what you need, and that's what we've done. We went in there not knowing what we needed. Half an hour later, we've picked out everything we need for it. So. Yeah, let's get to making some lines. How was that?
And just like that, everyone, we are slowly approaching the end of another episode, which is a good thing. The more videos we post means the more progress we have made, the closer we are to getting to actually drive this car, which is awesome. So in the next episode, we're going to be dropping the engine in, doing another few little bits and bobs, and we're going to start this car up for the first time. Why are you calling me now? Mother. I've probably answered that, actually. Yeah? No, I'm in a plus. Okay. All right, so as I was saying, um, yeah, these engine covers, this is what I'm gonna let you guys paint whatever color you want. There's just a few little rules. So no chameleon colors or color shifting colors. For example, Midnight Purple 2 and 3 are color shifting colors and also no candy colors just because I don't know how to spray those colors and I don't think it would look right anyways. Um, also hydro dipping. I don't think there's anyone in Perth that actually does it. I'd have to look into it, but no hydro dipping either. So any wrinkle paints, any metallics, solid colors, matte, satins, let your imagination do whatever it needs to do. If you like this sort of content, consider subscribing. Comment below what color you want to see it. Whoever gets the most likes, that's the color we're gonna choose. See you guys in the next one.